don't come to order. Mr. Marcus, would you give us the invocation, please? Now, join me while we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, this fine day. Thank you for this great country that we live in. Thank you for the patriots that uh, 234 years ago had the bravery and the foresight and the divine direction to sign the Declaration of Independence and to begin this great country that we have the privilege of living in. Lord, help us to have the same sense of purpose and give us the same divine guidance that you gave them that we could do the right thing for the people of this county. We pray for them. We pray that you would bless the people that serve them, that work for the county, the people that protect them uh, in public service. Uh, we pray for our state leaders. We pray for our federal leaders. We pray for the people on the Gulf as they suffer. And we pray that uh, you would help the leadership do the right thing to make those people whole. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, for ourselves that you would bless this country and this state and this county. And we pray all these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chairman and Commissioners, the first item uh, tonight is to consider to approve your meeting minutes for June 22, 2010. What's the wishes of the board? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. The next item is to consider to approve your minutes for the personnel committee that met on June 29, 2010. What's the wish? Sorry. What's the wishes of the board? I make a motion to uh, do I table it or just delay the approval until they can be corrected? I'd like to table the minutes from June 29th until they can be corrected. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, item 4C is consideration to approve your personnel committee meeting minutes for July 1st, 2010. What's the wishes of the board? Make a motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. And the last minutes to be considered to approve our personnel committee meeting minutes for July 7, 2010. I'd make a motion that we table those minutes until they can be amended. I'll second it. All in favor? Chairman and Commissioners, there are no items under the consent agenda tonight. We do have two items under new business. The first, I'd like to call Mr. Tim, Tim Nelson to address the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Board Commissioners. Did you guys all get a copy of the sign ordinance? I, okay. Um, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on it. Um, from what you guys have seen of me, I got some problems with the ones that were submitted to you. and. Um, I figured the best way to go about it was to submit something that I thought was going to be a little bit cleaner and a little bit better. Um, some of the changes, um, I allowed lighting on subdivision signs because it's already on some of them, but the new the other uh, piece of paper wouldn't allow it. Um, also, a uh, lighted sign on ag and C4 signs. Um, I raised the rates. Um, there's no reason that your smallest sign should cost more per square foot than any of the other signs in the county. Uh, so I just raised it to the equal rate. and. Uh, thought that would probably be a good thing to do, um, especially because you got to pay a code enforcement officer to enforce a sign ordinance. Um, the next thing, I removed that 35, arbitrary 35 number on multi-message signs. With gas stations and banks and everything else, you're going to have a whole lot more than 35 multi-message signs in the county in the next five years. And uh, I'd like to see them. Um, next thing, no limit on small signs. That gets rid of all the errors and problems that we've raised about fence signs, this, that, and everything else. Um, the next thing, um, billboards, I removed any limits on them. Um, they, it's still in the same zones, industrial and uh, heavy commercial, but the board has to have approval of final placement um, on those uh, billboards if they want to place them. Um, 
Flag issues, I cleared up with flag poles, building poles, number of flags, all that good stuff, size of flags, and it's real clear um, and enforceable. Uh, the next thing is the amortization process. Um, I sped it up to a year in here. Um, the reason I did that, if you got something good and you want to do it right, you might as well do it. If you put it off three years, half the board might not be here to try to enforce something that you guys put in place. So if you want to stand behind it, stand behind it. Plus, it'll get things moving a lot quicker. Um, and the last thing that I did is I allowed a, an area for special use permits. Um, you see a lot of your car lots, um, want streamers, uh, wind dancers, you know, things to bring people in. Um, personally, I don't see a problem with them if they're used limitedly and they're paid for. Um, so why not put in a special use permit so that people can use those for a week at a time, two weeks at a time, whatever the board sets up for that, um, but still allows those signs and types of advertisements to be used and they won't be detrimental because they're not permanent and they're not going to be there all the time. But that's all I got on the sign ordinance. You guys can look through it and decide what you want to do. Um, the second item of business I had was um, to ask the board, instead of looking into hiring another code enforcement officer, look at putting out a request for proposal for a contract position um, that you would pay, you know, put the, the insurance amounts you want to require um, and all that stuff. Work at like a time, you know, an hourly rate plus mileage. Um, that way the board can control the contract and say, hey, it's peak campaign season. We'll, we'll let you work up to 40 hours this week. Um, you know, and and then when it's downtime, you're not paying any benefits, you can cut it down to 10 hours. The other benefit is there's no overtime. So that person can work on Saturdays and Sundays. I don't know how many of you guys seen snipe signs go up as soon as five o'clock hits on Friday and code enforcement's off for the weekend, but all of a sudden signs pop up. Um, that would allow enforcement over the weekend um, at no extra cost to, to the contract, um, just the hours that you want to pay. And you, like I said, you guys can set that per month or you know however quarter, whatever, however you want to budget for it. But I think that'd be a good way to go is to put out a request for proposal for a contractor for that position. That way you're not dedicated to one person, 40 hours, all the benefits and everything that goes with that as well as the vehicle because the person would and the contract would be providing their own vehicle if you did it right. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Chairman, I'd like to call Mr. Jeff Sexton to address the board regarding the Leesburg Central Park. Okay, um, you all know I made this campaign issue with my last election last fall. Um, I still, I've been active going out there at least once every couple of months ever since then. Um, honestly, guys, it needs a bit of maintenance that I don't know if we can get the Parks and Recreation to do or maybe the sheriff can get a crew out community service to do. But every summer, rambles cover at least one part of the trail to where you can barely get through it. And it's just once a month, maybe 10, 30 minutes or so, go over cut that one section and it's basically done. Um, I also wanted to discuss briefly and hopefully get y'all's approval to move forward because if, if y'all aren't gonna let me do this, there's no reason to even plan it. Um, I want to get community support to build a better playground over there. I've actually personally worked with an organization called Kaboom several years ago that they're basically a Habitat for Humanity type organization that goes around and builds playgrounds everywhere. They've got several builds in Georgia. I've personally built them in Orlando and Austin, Texas. And basically what you can do with that, you, you raise the money in the community, you get volunteer work, minimal cost, other than once we build it, we hand it off to y'all to maintain it. So that way the community gets a big nice part that they'll love, y'all don't have to spend any of the extra money. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Now we have a public hearing. Mr. 
Daryl Keith Gilbert Jr. is requesting that the Board of Commissioners of Lee County grant him an alcohol license to sell a retail sale of off-premises consumption of wine and malt beverages. The public meeting is now open. Is Mr. Gilbert here? Would you please come forward, sir? I realize it's for the new public store on US 19. Is there anything you'd like to add to uh, your request? Uh, any comments? Uh, um, I think that pretty much summarizes. I mean, it's for the, the sale of uh, beer and wine. Um, it's not liquor. And uh, it's just retail sales, typical grocery store uh, business. So, I'd be happy to answer any questions. No, I don't think you need to. I just want to thought okay. you might have some comments. Uh, no, we're very excited about uh, about opening here in uh, Leesburg. You guys have been fabulous as far as uh, accommodating us and working with us, and uh, had a great turnout. We did some job fairs and things up here. So I think uh, all in all, we had around 1,500 folks come through. So great opportunity, and uh, can't say enough nice things. To everybody I've run into, we're excited, and, and they're excited. So appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. Governor. We're excited also. When are you going to turn the open sign on? About, Joe, about August? August August 18th, I believe, right now. That's so fantastic. Ran into a few delays, I think, on the parking lot or something. That's that's not really my avenue. I, just, <laughs> uh, I handle it from there once the building's turned over to us. So, so But right now, that's what it looks like. So, well, thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. Does anyone else have any comments in reference to this uh, application? I'd like to say something. I'd just like to thank the folks at Publix and publicly say we're thrilled to have you as our neighbor. Can't wait for you to turn the sign on. Amen. Public meeting is now closed for the presentation. The next public meeting is to discuss a multi jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan update. Mr. Bob Alexander, would you please come forward? As you probably remember, we we have uh, hired H&H uh, Resources uh, to do the update on the hazard mitigation plan, and we have uh, Mike Talley here tonight to uh, go over the the update. So I'll turn it over to, to Mike right now. Good evening. I'll, I'll be brief. I've, I've been, <coughs> been before the board before, early on in the planning stages. This is the five-year update for the multi-jurisdictional plan. It's required uh, to be eligible for hazard mitigation assistance should a disaster be declared in your county. Uh, we, we held various uh, planning sessions with uh, county staff and representatives of Leesburg and Smithville as well, since it's multi-jurisdictional, includes all the municipalities in Lee County. Um, GEMA has reviewed the plan and given its approval, and now it go, will go to FEMA and uh, after approval by FEMA will be back here asking that you approve uh, the plan and each jurisdiction, Smithville, Leesburg, and Lee County will be, will be asked to approve the plan. And then it goes into a maintenance cycle where once a year the director of planning and engineering will uh, reconvene some of the same players that we had in the planning sessions to see how the implementation of the plan is going. And then at the end of the five years we'll actually update your plan again similar to this process. Uh, the main thing is we had to look at what was said in your plan from uh, 2005, what the county would do, and address what, which ones got completed, which ones didn't, which ones we felt were no longer applicable to the county. And so we've now got a new list of uh, mitigation steps to help. And the main areas are, are flooding, obviously, uh, high winds, uh, tropical storms, tornadoes, thunderstorms. You have a hazardous material section now and uh, a drought section as well. And uh, the one of the typical type things that we have is uh, for the high winds and weather events would be a reverse 911 code red system uh, for the county to to pursue funding for that to install that in the county to help the residents get forewarning of a, a storm approaching. And I know the uh, the chief would would like something like that as well. So